Well, America's talking tonight about this controversial new reality show, and then the Kanye West, Jimmy Kimmel, the sort of burying of the hatchet, so to speak. Uh, You're not yeah, buying it. we'll get to that in just a second. But first, the Oxygen Network debuted The Preachers of L.A. last night. The show explores the lives of six preachers beyond the pulpit. And these aren't your mama's preachers. Uh-uh. I've been divorced now for 20 years. The question is asked, do I think I'll ever remarry? And my response is, I don't know. When you get to be my age, then you think about, why can't I have some fun? There is no secret what God can do. You see my bling. You see my Bentley. And you see my glory, but you don't know my story. All right, so the question tonight, is there anything wrong with spreading the message of the gospel in style and with bling, as he described it? So I want to bring in Rabbi Shmuley and John Murray from alwaysalist.com. You guys, great to see you. You know, Rabbi Shmuley, you're a religious leader. Yeah, I want to get your take on what you think about this show. Do you think it sends the wrong religious message that prosperity is more important than focusing on sort of the spiritual well-being, so to speak? My first complaint is, where's my Bentley? <laughs> I don't know. Am I, in, am I in the wrong profession here? Do rabbis not get the roles? Look, um, <laughs> America is awash in materialism. And sometimes materialism really does squash the spiritual spirit, and it can be utterly suffocating. So if the message of this show is, you could be a pastor and live like a hedge fund manager, well, Wall Street will pay you even more, so what's the point? But if the message is that you could be a pastor and it's actually a respectable profession and teaching and being a cleric usually is seen as the very bottom of the totem pole, and people don't even think about going into these professions, but here is a show demonstrating that you can get recognition, that you can inspire people. That's a positive message, but if it's just you can use God to make a bundle of cash, that's pathetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's we, mm -hmm. it seems strange. Maybe they're trying to convey both messages from what I saw. And John, mega churches, we know they're big business, and there's nothing really out there like this. So do you think oxygen's going to strike gold? You know, um, I, I'm not sure. We haven't seen the, the final ratings yet, but listen, forget the entertainment business or forget hitting the lottery. I might need to go to seminary after watching this show. I mean, they're living the rock star lifestyle, which is the problem that most people have with this show. Here's the thing. Most people feel like the religious, the faith-based, the spiritual experience should be secret. It's kind of like, you know, they say if you like to eat hot dogs, don't go to the plant because you won't want to eat them anymore. So <laughs> people don't want to know the inside track to their preachers because it, it, it takes away the sacredness of it. And, and they feel like it's too close for comfort. Mm -hmm. I know several people who have left several of these ministers' churches just by the idea of them doing reality television. Yeah, that's actually a good point there. All right, America's also talking about this Kanye West, Jimmy Kimmel, kissing and making up, so to speak. We told you about their Twitter war that they were in last week. And remember, the whole thing started over this skit that Kimmel did that parodied <laughs> uh, the Kanye West interview. The spoof was done with child actors. It was hilarious. And as soon as West caught wind of it, he threw this big Twitter tantrum. He sort of acted like a child about it. It. So Kimmel tried to extend the olive branch, and he invited West onto the show, hashed the whole thing out, apologies were made, misunderstandings were cleared up, kissy kissy, right? Well, it, it ended up that West opened up and went on for an eight minute and 15 second rant. He name dropped, he called himself a creative genius, gave shout outs to Steve Jobs and Jesus. We cannot make this stuff up. <laughs> so we went ahead and pressed fast forward for you guys, uh, you know, that, that Because we of, can't summarize it. Because, because it went in 25 different directions. Honestly, Ryan and I were sitting in the <laughs> office today and I looked back at Ryan and I was like, I, I, can't, I need to finish it because I've invested five minutes, but I almost can't get through it. Yeah, that wasn't working, I'll tell you. So John, there was a lot of talk about this whole thing being a publicity stunt. So what are you buying? Are you buying this uh, idea of a breakup to make up? And do you think that it was planned? Because Jimmy Kimmel sure was kind and nice to him last night. Well, apparently they had a relationship prior to the big Twitter beef. And listen, the best actors in Hollywood could not create the awkward tension that they had on that show last <laughs> so night. True. And let me tell you, I've never been depressed, I've never take, taken medicine, but I needed a Xanax after watching uh, Kanye West on that show last night. It was the most bizarre rant that i ever seen in my life. And Jimmy Kimmel had the best line when Kanye was talking about the lack of diversity in the fashion industry, when he said, there's no black people over in Paris. Jimmy Kimmel said, well, what about the Steve Harvey collection? <laughs> that was the one thing that made me burst out laughing. That For show John, otherwise last night was awkward. John Murray having to take a Xanax. That was a first. That, yeah. All right, so Rabbi, I want to get your take on uh, this sound bite. Let's take a listen to it. Get your take on the other side. When I compare myself to Steve Jobs or uh, Walt Disney, Howard Hughes, uh, David Stern, Michelangelo, uh, Da Vinci, uh, Jesus, or whatever it is, I'm saying.
my heroes. You know, I'm a creative genius, and there's no other way to word it. He was saying, these are my heroes. Rabbi, he was saying, I want to leave the same mark on this world that they did. I'm sorry, did Kanye West just say he wants to leave the same mark that Jesus did? <laughs> I'm, I, I just want to get your take on that. Well, we know that when the Beatles said that, it didn't uh, exactly turn out that well for them, but it's still a very memorable comment. Look, in the final analysis, Kanye West is the most brilliant self-publicist, and that's what this is. Ratings, ratings, and more ratings. But you got to give a guy credit who gets on someone else's show, it's the Jimmy Kimmel show, and totally co-ops it and becomes his show. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is invasion and conquest like I've never seen. I've, I, I came, I saw, I conquered, and uh, he's created this very outsized personality. Now, in the final analysis, America is celebrity-obsessed. America loves these people who, the glitz, and that's what we, we just saw even the pastors are getting in on this act so if he wants to compare himself to some of the great people of, of history let him but we all know oh, I yawn. this isn't about how long he oh. went on it's about who really cares in the final analysis exactly all right so rabbi shmuley butea thank you so much john Mori, thank you as well you know what i couldn't believe i stayed up past midnight he to did. see that and it was not worth it i can't <laughs> believe kimmel let him overrun the show she